Dear Lord, the Rescue American Ministries here in Tessendale, Romania. And um, it's plain to see that I'm not uh, probably the best dressed preacher in town today. We're in the process of moving, so you just have to overlook it. Um, if you're looking for an excuse not to listen, then you'll find something anyway. So um, we'll talk about the, uh, I'm going to start in uh, Genesis today, uh, chapter 4, and uh, talk about the culture wars. Uh, you've all heard that term, I'm sure. It's uh, And it's used plural, you know, the culture wars. But I say that there's not culture wars. There's one culture war. There's a lot of battles along the way. Um, and that's where we want to start in um, Genesis, because I believe that we can go back to that point. And I think we can see where the culture wars started. Um, <clears throat> and it's never, never stopped. It's been consistent. There's been times when it's been more fierce, just like any war. Uh, you've got sometimes that the fighting is pretty fierce, and sometimes you get the upper hand and you uh, have the other side um, maybe held back some, and uh, uh, things go well for a while, and then things flare back up. And sometimes they get the upper hand for a while, and uh, uh, God's people are under persecution then. Uh, so I'm going to look. We'll see that <clears throat> you could take this back, I suppose, in a way to Adam and Eve, but I say it really started um, for all intents and purposes with Cain and Abel uh, because you had um, Adam and Eve, of course, sent in the garden, and, of course, that started, made the whole thing possible. But now... In verse uh, in chapter four, it says, "Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, i 'I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord.'" Um, and so, um, of course, it already they, Adam and Eve both had already committed the sin, um, but in this case, she did everything right. She gave God credit, you know, for giving her a child. But uh, then in chapter 2, it says, And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain the worker of the ground. And uh, I'll not read all the verses, because I think most people know what happened. They each offered or made an offering uh, from what they had raised themselves. And that happened to be okay in Abel's case, but it wasn't just coincidence, but... Um, and God accepted Abel's sacrifice, uh, his offering. Uh, well, Cain offered the works of his hand, which was uh, the works of the ground, uh, more agriculture things, where as uh, Abel had um, dealt more with uh, sheep and things like that, which is offered. And um, it, but the, the thing is, there were. were Ways made, I'm sure, uh, and we see that in the law, that if you didn't have um, what was needed, and most usually that was a lamb, uh, the law hadn't been given at this time. I understand that. But I think God's will was already made known. It, it seems to be evident for that. It, this was not a case of where Cain just messed up. Or he just missed it uh, by mistake or something. Uh, he, it was very intentional what he did. Um, uh, just listen to what God said to him. Uh, it says that, um, and the Lord had regard for Abel in his offering, but for Cain in his offering he had no regard. And Cain had offered the fruit of the of the ground he had raised, and uh, Abel used the firstborn of his flock, which was correct. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure at least Adam and Eve knew what was expected uh, and probably had been passed on to both boys uh, if God himself hadn't spoken to them. Um, so Cain was very, uh, very angry because um, God did not uh, accept his offer, offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, and, and that's the key, I think that we know that they knew, that Cain knew what he was supposed to do. If you do well, will you not be accepted? 
And if you do not well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. And so uh, then it goes on, verse 8, Cain spoke to his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And so uh, I, I say right there is where the, the culture war officially began. Um, you um, go to John chapter 3, and you see it all over again. When Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to this earth, uh, it says that he was the light of the world, and uh, he came to bring light, his light. But he was not received by everyone because the people that loved to live in darkness would not accept him. And that's what they wanted. They, they were uh, people of the dark, loved darkness because they were sinful. And uh, it says the people uh, who are right, then they will come to the light. And so there was a, um, a great culture uh, break, a breach right there um, <clears throat> when Jesus came. Now, Jesus knew what he was dealing with. He knew what was going to happen when he came. It, it, you know, he wasn't caught off guard and uh, caught by surprise or anything. But um, <clears throat> the Bible says that, that there are those that love darkness rather than light. And that's something we need to, to learn. It's not now, well, we recognize, okay, these people are bad people. We need to hate them or something like that. No, that's not it. But you do need to realize what we're dealing with. Now, <clears throat> there is um, a thought, and I've heard several people make that statement over a number of years, a long period of time. I've heard it over uh, a few times. That people have said that um, they really uh, didn't talk about Jesus much, that they really wanted to live, just live, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> they would like to live such a holy life that, you know, people would just, you know, be drawn to Christ by that. Um, now, I'm not judging who is honest about that and who's not, but I'm saying not everybody is. Um, Maybe need to search your heart. I, I haven't met that person yet, I don't think. Uh, I'm not sure if you can find him in the Bible anywhere. Um, Moses had to use words. Um, Jeremiah had to use words. Um, well, Jesus himself used words. <laughs> uh, nobody that we see in the Bible that I see anywhere. Now, if, you know, if you want to accomplish that, you're going, you've got something to do here. You, you're going to have to surpass a lot of good people, a lot of godly people in the Word of God and throughout history uh, if you're going to achieve that. Um, I'm just saying that I don't think that's, that's realistic. Uh, I'm not saying that people aren't sincere, that they would like to do that. But uh, let me put this out. And there again, I'm not judging who, because I don't even know who, who's listening. I don't know who's uh, getting it. The Holy Spirit knows uh, where this is going and who's, who's getting it. And he'll direct it wherever it needs to go. Uh, I'm just bringing the message. But you might want to check up and make sure that you don't have that attitude just because you're not willing to suffer rejection or suffer a little persecution uh, for what Christ has done for you. Yeah, you love him, but it, not quite enough to offend people. You don't want to offend people and, and maybe lose a friend or something like that or have people mad at you. And that may just be a cop-out when you say that you would just like to be so holy and so live so righteous that and godly that... Uh, you don't have to speak anything. And I know that there's a saying that goes out, and I, I uh, in part, agree with it. It's, it's a good attitude to have, and I wish we could. That We ought to strive to live holy, that holy and that godly that we wouldn't have to. But the truth is that we are going to have to because um, that's basically what 
God commands. And that's basically what God said uh, in his word is that his word is powerful. Not your living. You're just, I don't think you've got it in you um, to accomplish that. Uh, That uh, you could draw people like that. Not that you would never draw anyone. I'm not saying that. There's always exceptions to the rule. And you might draw more than some other people uh, uh, at that uh, type of thing. But uh, the Bible says that the Word of God is powerful, not your life, not your lifestyle. And that's good, and that's important. It ought to go along with it. But uh, too many people we hear now, they're saying, well, uh, you know, preachers shouldn't be so loud and... uh, uh, shouldn't sound, never sound angry or whatever. Well, I'd say Jesus was angry a few times, and he spoke angry a few times. Uh, when he called the, the Pharisees a, a bunch of serpents, then I don't think he was uh, laughing with them, <laughs> cutting up or anything. I think it's a very serious thing that he was telling them. They were a bunch of serpents. And another time he told them that uh, they were uh, their father the devil. Uh, they were children of the devil. So, you know, if you, you think that's too harsh, maybe you ought to talk to Jesus about it. Uh, but uh, God has called us to preach his word. And I, I don't believe in going out and just uh, being uh, mean-spirited and things uh, just uh, uh, for the show of it or anything. Uh, now, I, I think there probably are a few people that go out and do that just so that they can be persecuted. That makes them... Look like, oh, I'm being persecuted. I'm really doing something. I'm really godly or whatever. But um, I don't think most of them are. I think most of them are sincere. And, and, you know, you you raise your voice. If uh, if you're angry, you should be angry at sin. When you look at what sin has caused, then you should be angry at it. And so uh, it's not that you're necessarily angry with people, but you're angry with the sin uh, that's going on. Um. Look at Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. The Bible says, All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, I don't think just living a godly life or trying to, but being careful not to say anything to offend anyone or, or never having to talk to anybody about Jesus, I don't think that's going to get you any persecution at all. Uh, and like I say, that's not the reason you do it, but I'm just saying that uh, the Bible says if you live godly in Christ Jesus, so that might be a, um, a standard you could use right there and see how you're, if you're one of these that uh, think you can live just uh, a godly life and people be drawn to you, uh, then that might be a, a measuring stick that you can uh, put up and say, well, have I suffered any persecution? I doubt it very seriously if you've, that's all you've done. Now, First Peter 4, 4 then. Here's the other thing I want to talk about, and, and the, this will be the primary thing that we are talking about. As I said a while ago, we need to understand what we're dealing with in this world and how much we're hated. Now, that doesn't mean that every person without God is the same. There's always exceptions uh, to the rule, but uh, but First Peter four four says, talking about the ungodly, they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess. Uh, in other words, to the same sins, sinful lifestyle. Then they um, they think it's strange that you don't uh, participate in the same thing. We uh, we are shocked sometimes by the opposition we get when we propose something that's good. Uh, And um, so we shouldn't be. We really shouldn't be because there's always those that hate us. And that's the reason they do hate us, because we're different. They think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess. And so... uh, Something's wrong with you, according to them. Uh, and so that for that reason, you can expect a lot of opposition. And we see it, and we're living in a time now where it's really flared up. 
uh, where that hatred is really out there, visible uh, as never before, or at least not in a long time. Uh, in my lifetime, for the most part, growing up, we, um, you know, most people had respect for people um, who were godly. They had respect for the church. Of course, not everyone, but for the most part. Um, and that has waned, you know, less and less as uh, time has come on. And now uh, it seems that uh, more people than ever think it's strange that we don't act like they think we should act. Um, so you got, uh, they got this culture war then, and, and that's where it started. Like I say, it, it began with Cain and Abel, and it ended in murder. As Cain murdered his brother Abel. And um, that's how serious this is taken. That's how serious uh, a lot of these godless and ungodly people take it. Uh, that's how angry they are. You remember um, as um, Stephen uh, preached to them about uh, how they had um, uh, killed Christ, and uh, they got so angry it says that they just clenched their teeth and um, then ran up on him, and then they, and, and I think you know, possibly even bit him, and, and uh, then, of course, he was stoned to death. And they stopped their ears, you know, so they couldn't hear what he was saying. That's another thing. I was dealing with that a little earlier today. People don't want to hear uh, your point of view. They, they don't hear anything different than what they believe, and, uh, and they're ready to shut you up. And if they could, you know, whether by laws, and that's where it's going, and also, uh, boy, there's a lot here I can talk about. It's, um, I have people t saying all the time, you shouldn't get involved with politics. Don't talk about politics. Uh, preachers shouldn't talk about politics. Well, you can't talk about anything anymore without it being political because everything's considered political uh, nowadays. And besides that, um, the Bible says that God rules in the kingdom of men. And so if, man, if God calls men to preach the gospel, then I don't see anywhere that it says, well, don't speak anything about politics. That leave, leave the politicians alone. Leave the sins that are being uh, done by the government and um, advanced by the government. Uh, you know, just leave those things alone. No. Um, the, the people in the Old Testament that suffered and was pers persecuted and killed many times was because, was because they, <clears throat> excuse me, they went, either went to the king or either they preached a message and it got to the king, uh, about the king. John the Baptist would not have lost his head if it hadn't been he. Uh, criticized uh, Herod for taking his brother's wife. Uh, but he did. Now, you know, some of you think that's wrong. Well, I, let me tell you why some of you think it's wrong. This, again, I'm not putting everybody in the same boat. Uh, the Holy Spirit will choose. <laughs> he knows you. Uh, if you're guilty, then he will convict you. So if, uh, if he's not convicting you, then... This is not, not to you. It's not about you. Okay. Um, but um, politics is not off the board. It's um, open. And that's where, like I say, a lot of the Old Testament prophets went. And they addressed the kings. They addressed the uh, and that would have been political people. Even Jesus himself, I know, yeah, I've lost my, went off where I had started, but let's go on this way. Even Jesus himself, because that's the prime example. Jesus himself addressed the Pharisees and the uh, scribes of his, those were the political leaders. You say, well, they were, those were religious leaders. They were. They were both religious leaders and they were the uh, ruling groups um, of the Jewish people. 
And you may say, well, the Romans were ruling. Well, they were, but they let the Jewish people settle things short of murder. Then Jewish law, they allowed the Jews to have, still have their government, and they directed those things. And so Jesus himself directed a lot of his, matter of fact, most of it, I think, would be to the politicians, his criticisms of sin and what they were guilty of. And he didn't hold any punches. So, you know, if you just say that um, uh, you shouldn't address political issues, shouldn't get involved with politics, I'll tell you why some of you um, do not want to do that. It's because that your particular political party happens to be the guilty ones of most of this stuff. They happen to be the ones that promote abortion. They happen to be the ones that promote homosexuality and uh, all these um, transgender movements.